So getting started with Netbird is actually quite easy. We're just gonna go up here to the main website, netbird.io. In the top right corner, click on Get Started. Now, Netbird supports multi-factor authentication to enhance the security of your account by requiring a second form of verification during login. This works automatically if you have multi-factor authentication in your single sign-on provider, such as Google or Microsoft or any that we have listed here. For my example in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create an account using my Google single sign-on and then just sign into my Google account. And then the first time you sign in, you're actually gonna get this nice onboarding page here. So first select whether if this is gonna be for business use or personal use. Where'd you hear about us? We're gonna say YouTube for this. And how do we plan on using Netbird? For me, I'm gonna use it for home remote access as well as file access. So we can click continue. And then here under getting started with Netbird, these are our two kind of options on how we want to use it. And this is just gonna help with the initial setup. If you pick one or the other, it doesn't change anything in the functionality or the options that you're gonna get in your dashboard. For this setup, we're gonna set up a nice little peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. So I'm gonna click right there. And our very first task is to install Netbird. And I'm gonna just install it on this local machine here. So if I click on install Netbird, under Mac OS, I'm gonna download this for Apple Silicon. And now we can see it pop up right here. So we're just gonna open the installer. And here the installation process is fairly simple. We just click continue. We could change the installation location if we'd like to. Click install. Here we're gonna type in our administrator password and then it's gonna install the packages and scripts and everything else that it needs. Head back into our web browser, we can actually close this out, and here you can see it's actually waiting for our first device to connect. After it's installed, you'll notice up here in your system tray, the little Netbird icon. Here, we can just go ahead and click on connect. We're gonna to need to authenticate this real quick, so I'm just gonna continue with Google for my setup, and we're gonna authorize this app to use this account. And here we can see the login is successful. So if we look over here, we can see that it is connected. And if I close this out and head over here, you can see that the Mac mini is indeed connected. So now this is a initial peer-to-peer -peer network setup, so we're gonna to need to bring in a second device. Which for this example, I have a small headless Ubuntu container on a local machine in my home network that we're also gonna be connecting as a peer. There's a link to install this with a setup key. If we go ahead and click on this, it's gonna create a one-off setup key that we're gonna be able to use to connect to Netbird. These setup keys are basically for servers and other scenarios where no human behind can actually trigger SSO. So I'm gonna hit continue, and then it's gonna bring up all the steps that we need to do this. Now this is Linux, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this single line command a copy, head over to our Ubuntu server here, and then paste it on in. What this is going to do is automatically install all the necessary services and packages that we are going to need to get Netbird up and running. And here we can see that the Netbird service has started. We're all good to go. So now over here, we could go ahead and grab that setup key. So it's a Netbird up command with the setup key. Just give that a copy. And then we're gonna go ahead and drop it on in paste it and then go ahead and hit enter. And then just like that, you could see it's connected and this page over here actually changed. It's let's put that connection to the test. And this is actually gonna be pinging those machines using Netbird IP addresses instead of our local IP addresses. So if I copy this and I actually head over to our local terminal for the Mac mini that we also have a Netbird peer running on, drop this in. This will ping that Ubuntu machine using this IP and we can see that the connection is successful. So I could close that out. We could say it works, continue. And for this video, we're not really gonna get into policies. So we're gonna go ahead and keep the default policy enabled, allowing all connections between all devices. And real quick, just as an example of the policies in action, if I again go ahead and ping this IP address for that Ubuntu server over here, drop in the IP address, you could see the connection right there is fine. The policy is allowing access. But if I get rid of this default policy here, let it update, you could see the connection is now broken and I am getting a timeout over here. But if I go ahead and allow this policy, let it update, you can see the connection is reestablished and we have full connection over here between the two peers. So that's just a quick example of that default policy. We could go ahead and click on continue. There are some videos here, which you should go ahead and check out. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and continue to the dashboard. And then here we are, we are in our Netbird dashboard with our two peers that we've already set up in which on this peer page, you can see we have access to both the domains and the Netbird IP addresses here. And actually, if I click on one of these, such as my Mac mini, I could drop in and see a bunch of information about it, where it's at, the operating system version, the public IP address. We could edit the names up here if we would like to, enable SSH access, and a lot more. 
Additionally, if we do head over to setup keys, we can see the very first onboarding setup key we created. It was a one-off key and it was used. So now it's going to be disabled. But if you do have additional devices to connect, creating setup keys is pretty easy. You just click the button there. You give it a name, you fill out this. So if you want to make the key reusable, for example, you go ahead and do that. Additionally, you can auto assign it to a group. So for example, if you're gonna set up, let's say three different Linux offsite servers and you wanted them in the same group, you could create something here called offsite, hit enter. And now any machine that uses this setup key up to those three machines will automatically be enrolled in that group. And the groups relate to access control over here under policies. We briefly mentioned this default policy, which this allows all sources to connect to all destinations. So by default, everything is going to be able to connect to each other that is within NetBird. Now, if you're a single user doing this, this is probably fine, but just to give you a brief overview of how policies can work for you, Let's say we wanted to go to teams, users. We have my user right here. And let's say I wanted to add myself to an admin group, just like that, hit enter. And now I can save the groups and now I'm in that group. Now, if I head back over to peers, I can assign my peers specific groups. So if I open up this and I created a home lab group, hit enter, save that group. And you can see the Mac mini here is already in a group since it is a admin device. It's a device associated with my user. It was automatically assigned that group. So then what I could do is go over to policies and scroll on over. Let's add a policy. And let's say we want the admin to be able to access anything in the home lab. Right now I'm going to keep it as all, but you can specify this by port or port ranges. If I hit continue, we have posture checks here. These are awesome. It allows you to make sure that users or clients have a specific netbird version. You could set it to a specific geographical location. You could even make sure a certain process is running in the background on their computer, such as an antivirus. But for now, I'm going to continue with that. And we could give this a name. This is my home lab policy, add the policy, scroll over a bit, and you could see it's right there. So now I can disable this default policy, bring our terminal back in here, and I should still be able to connect to it because it's part of that policy. But if I go ahead and disable this home lab policy, bring our terminal back up, you could see there was a timeout there. Policy is not active it's not working but if i enable just the home lab policy and not the default one you can see here that the connection was successfully re-established now there are an incredible amount of features you could set up networks enable network routes you can customize the dns and name servers dns settings and a lot more but for now we are good to go